In this recording, I'll talk about how Crossword Compiler uses word scoring to get good fills when it fills a grid, and how you can go about changing the scores of words in your own word lists. So when you fill a grid like this using autofill, so I put the cursor up here and I select autofill from the toolbar, Crossword Compiler can fill words automatically for you from a word list. And you can see here that it's used quite nice words. You've got definite, siesta, irist, sinecure. There's no obscure scientific terminology, no plurals. How is Crossword Compiler choosing which words to use? And the answer to that is the scoring of the words. These are all quite high scoring words, but they're not plurals, they're not obscure. Therefore, they're prioritized by the filling algorithm so that you get good fills. So if I go to the word list manager on the words menu, you can see the scores of individual words on the right-hand panel. So if I select the default word list, which is what I was filling with, you can see here the words and the associated score with each word. So by default, the highest scores here are 50, and then more obscure words and plurals are 25. So aardvark is 50, but aardvarks is 25. And if you go to duplicate filter list, this will give you a summary of how many words there are on the different scores. Now, when you fill a grid, if I take more control over it by using fill grid, you can set a minimum word score here, which is set to 10. So by default 10, make sure you don't get any vulgar or obscene words. So they're all scored lower than 10, so they're excluded by default. You never use them, however hard pressed the program wants to fill a slot. But you can change that. If I change that to 40, for example, then that would enforce the fill only using the highest scoring words. Of course, if you do that, then there are fewer words available and you'll have a harder job filling difficult grids. So let's go back to the word list manager uh, and look at the default word list. So if you want to change the scores, uh, you can do that uh, fairly directly by just selecting a word on the right-hand side here and changing the score. So you can click the up arrow here to increase it or the down arrow to decrease it, or you can just change it dramatically to something else if you want to. 35. If you want to change a set of words all at once, if you don't like any of these odd words, you can hold down shift, select the first one, the last one, right click and select change scores and then you can select which score to change those selected letters to. It takes a second because it's got rather a large word list here and then it's updated to 30. You can use filtering here to find words so for example here if I search for YSE that will find British words ending in YSE and the reason I'm getting these with high scores is because I've installed with British English options. If you just installed with American English options, you'd have YZE terms and these terms would be scored very low. But if I wanted to, if I had some other list which had these YSE words in and I wanted to get rid of them or change the score, I could delete these or I can also choose right click and then change all listed scores and I could change these all to something low, like 10 or something, if I wanted to downweight these particular words matching this particular pattern. So you can also filter your list by scores. So if I made a duplicate of the word list, I could choose to completely cut out these low scoring words, for example, by selecting holding down control and selecting only the scores that I want. And then my duplicated list would only contain the selected scores. If I want to bulk change the scores of words in a word list, I can go to the word list menu here and use change scores. So here I could change all the scores to a particular number, change all scores to a particular number or change a particular score. So if I wanted to recalibrate so that 50 was no longer the top one, but it was 60, I could change 50 to 60 
and that would change all my 50s to 60s. So now we have 60s. Another trick you can use is using add other lists. So this is the function you'd use if you wanted to merge word lists. But this window also has convenient options for the scores as well. So you can determine what happens to the scores of words you add from another list. But there's also an option here, adjust only, don't add words. So you could use that to change the scores based on the presence in another list without actually adding words. So for example, if I wanted to take the no add list, which is the new Oxford American Dictionary, and I wanted to upweight words which were in that word list, I could choose to change the scores of added words by five, say. But if I don't want to add all the really obscure words in no add, I could select adjust only, don't add words. So now if I press OK, that will process the list and you'll see that most of my scores have been increased by five, but most of these words are in the no add word list. You can also include scores when you import or export files. So if you do um, list to plain text file, uh, you can choose to include the scores. And so you can also in import plain text files with the score. The score is simply included after a semicolon after each word on each line in a plain text file you import. Okay, so what about if you want to look at the scores of words as you're filling things? So if you're using auto find to say, look at what word might fit in here, I could right click in this and that would show me the matches for that word slot. So this doesn't particularly use the scores, this just shows you all the matches. But if I noticed something and I didn't like the word Beatrice, I could right click on it and that will pop up the form in the word list with the score and then I could adjust the score of that word here or press delete if I wanted to get rid of it. And you could do that as well for words already in the puzzle. So you've got a puzzle and it's got some word that you don't want or you want to change the score of. So if I didn't like photogenic for some reason, I could right click on that word slot. It finds photogenic in the word list. If I right click again on photogenic, that gives me the option to change the score of that word or delete it. Let's have a look now at the Pro Grid Filler. So if I go to Words Fill Grid and use the Pro Grid Fillers add-ons manual word selection feature, that lets us choose each word we fill one at a time. So there are some optimization options here you can use for um, how much to count the scores. These don't have a massive effect, but they do have some effect on the relative ranking of different scores. So you can play around with different settings. But I'll just take the default option and fill this corner and see what we get. So here you can see actually the words that are listed for each slot are sorted by score. So the score here is not just the score of the individual word, it's also including scores of other words that might then have to be included. If I want to see what the actual score in the word list is of the particular word, I can right click on it and select change word score. So that will show me that the actual underlying score of this particular word is 50, and I can change the score to something else on the fly here if I want to. So if I scroll down the list, you'll see that the ones further down have a lower score, meaning either this word or another word that would be forced by using that word has a lower score than when I use the ones at the top. Another useful thing you can do with scoring is to adjust the scores of words that you've used in a puzzle. So here I've got a completed puzzle and if I want to, I can adjust the scores of the words in this puzzle in a word list or add them to a word list or make other adjustments. So I go to the words menu and I use change scores of words in puzzle. That allows me to adjust the words, the scores of all the words in the puzzle in a particular word list that I want to select. 
So I could choose to decrease the score by some amount. So this can be useful, for example, if you're producing a weekly puzzle and you want to try and avoid reusing words. If you make a puzzle, and then for each puzzle, decrease the score of those words that are used, the more a word is used, the lower the score will get and the less more deprioritized it will be. You could also, of course, use change scores too and set it to something very low, like five or 10, if you want to completely avoid those words for the moment to make sure you don't have any duplicates. You could add words here if you want to, so, so it doesn't just adjust scores, and then you can choose which score to add the words as well. So adjusting the scores is a good way of handling avoiding duplicates in a series of puzzles by just lowering them or changing the scores as you go along or deleting the words if you prefer. Since word lists are also used for various other things like spell checking and anagrams, you can also change how scores affect those by going to words menu, change list usage. So for example, on the anagram tag, you can choose a minimum word score for words that are used in anagrams. So for example, if you only want to use anagrams using relatively common words, you could increase this to something like 30 or 50. Likewise for the word finding, auto find, or for when you're doing spell checking. So that's about it for scoring. Most of the provided words in the word list are scored already, so the default word list is scored. The Word Web Dictionary add-on word list is scored to some extent, but some of the other add-on dictionaries are just raw lists of words in particular dictionaries, but there's no information available about scoring. So you can probably get started by using the default word list, but you may want to customize scores and build up your own lists, add your own words that you like with higher scores and fine tune things to get the best results you can out of the automatic grid filling features.